Welcome to this week's Ask Charlie. This week's video is inspired by somebody that got in touch after my my last week's vlog of Barcelona and I shared with you my packing tips, mum's packing tip of using tissue paper and such a great tip and they said can you share other tips and things that your mum taught you with us. So I thought this week I'd actually just sit down and share with you lots of wisdom that I learned from my mother. Every time one of mum's pearls of wisdom has popped into my mind as I've been thinking about um, sitting down and chatting to you about you know, her tips, I've been jotting them down, so I've got a pile of notes in front of me. The first thing that I wrote down is manners maketh man, and Gussie reminded me of this this morning on the school run. And Mum was always saying it. Sorry, Florence is running around the house like a complete maniac. Little pitter patter of feet, that is her. Anyway, um, yeah, manners maketh man. And I think it's so important to have good manners, to say please, to say thank you. Um, really, really essential. Manners go a long way. It takes very little effort to say thank you or to hold a door open for somebody, but it's really, really appreciated. So that is um, my first pearl of wisdom that mum passed on to us. We are all God's children and mum would often say this, treat everybody as though they are equals, whether they're a duke, whether a duchess, whether they're the dustbin man, we are all actually the same. We've just been born into a more privileged life or, or things are tougher for us. And actually, if you treat everybody with kindness and with respect, it goes such a long way. You don't need to just bow down to somebody because they're important or they've got a title. Actually, having courtesy for your dustbin men, for example, Simon's away at the moment and I, one of his jobs is to put out the bins. The bank holiday has thrown me and of course it's Tuesday morning. I didn't think last night I need to put out the bins and I was up early. I heard the bin men at our neighbours and was like, oh my goodness. And I ran out in my pyjamas and I was like, I'm so sorry I forgot. How are you? You know, hope you had a good weekend. And just taking a moment just to be kind and courteous goes such a long way. So I think, you know, treating everybody as though they are equals is such an important lesson that mum instilled in me and my brother from a very, very early age. Don't assume check. And this can be taken in two ways. Whether you are packing for something, don't assume that somebody has put it in the bag, check yourself. But also, don't make assumptions about people. Don't assume that they are, you know, whatever, have a wonderful, successful life. Actually take the time to talk to them, get to know them. Don't assume or write somebody off because you've made an assumption about a car that they're driving or what they're wearing. Don't assume things. Get to know somebody and actually then you can make assumptions when you actually know a person. And I mentioned this again not long ago about walking in somebody else's shoes. Until you've walked in somebody else's shoes, you don't know what kind of life they live. And so it's really wrong to make assumptions about people, um, you know, quickly. Get to know somebody, chat to them, take some time before you make any rash assumptions. And also, <laughs> when it comes to don't assume check in the other context, it is really important to don't assume, check that it's in. We had a disaster a few weekends ago where we were going to a, uh, a competition, Coco was riding, and I cleaned her bridle, hung it up. I normally put it in the bag. I didn't. I asked Coco to load everything up. I didn't check with her that she'd put the bridle in the bag. I didn't check. I just assumed. And we got there and there was no bridal. Luckily, some lovely people came to our rescue and it was fine. <clears throat> but that was a time where I was like, oh, Charlie, don't assume, check. And normally I load things and Coco's, you know, doing things with the ponies, but the situation was different that day. And I didn't assume, I didn't, uh, well, I assumed, I didn't check and I didn't remind her and a really good lesson learned, 
we won't be doing that again and I will make sure that I do check and not assume that things have just been done. This is something mum was always saying, look after the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. And actually it's, it's really true. We do need to be mindful of our money and how we're spending it and what we're doing with it. And you know, it's something that I always think about and something that I've passed on to my children. They probably think, oh, why are you saying that again, mummy? But it is something, um, you know, to be careful, to look after the pennies um, and the pounds will look after themselves, I think is, is an important thing to bear in mind. Don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today. And I often think about this, particularly, particularly at the end of the day when really I quite like to go to bed and read my book, but the dishwasher should be emptied and the kitchen should be set straight for the, for the evening. It's starting the day on the front foot rather than starting the day on the back foot. Obviously, you don't want to run yourself ragged doing everything, in, you know, that day. But if you do those little things and don't put them off till tomorrow, it makes life so much easier the following day and um, the day is likely to go smoother if you've done, done those bits. So don't put things off, just crack on and do them. She'd often say this, KBO, keep bashing on. There is another alternative with a B word, which I'm not gonna use here, but you can probably imagine, but KBO was something that she often said, keep bashing on, just keep going. You've just got to get on with it. Particularly, you know, we all have moments of, gosh, I can't really be bothered, but you've just got a KBO. Laugh and the world laughs with you, cry and you cry alone. And again, this is something that I often think about. If you are happy, if you are positive, if you are upbeat, then, Everybody else around you is, but if you're always kind of doom and gloom and misery, then people just have enough of you. I often um, think that the energy I would I spend on crying, it's not worth it. It's just going to make me feel even worse. You know, if you, I can't really think of an example at the moment, but if something's you know really upset you somebody's really bothered you and you want to cry but actually if you have sometimes having a good cry is good and it's cathartic but actually the energy that you use crying and I actually I often say this to the children you know have a little cry that's fine but then move on from it put it behind you move on because if you carry it with you for a long time you will end up feeling worse you will use up so much energy, you'll feel more drained, more tired, you'll probably give yourself an awful headache. So have a little cry, pull yourself together and move on. Take pride in yourself. Mum was always, um, <laughs> always taking pride in her appearance. <laughs> she, people, in fact, I was talking to somebody about 18 months ago, mum would always arrive um, at the yard. This was pre us having our own ponies at home and she would arrive with her red lipstick on and her perfume and her hair done just to go and ride a horse. She always took pride in her appearance and I think if you take pride in your appearance you feel good about yourself and then you give off a good a good sort of aura and I think it's important to take pride. I could have turned up and recorded today with no makeup on, hair scraped back, sweaty from a workout but actually, I, I want to take pride in my appearance. I want to look nice for you. And so I think it is important to take pride in how you look. I always look in the mirror before I leave the house, just check that, you know, nothing is hanging out where it shouldn't be or, or what have you. So taking time, taking a little bit of pride in yourself um, makes a big difference. This is a really good one. If the job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. So don't just, you know, quickly whiz and do a job. Actually, do it properly. I was um, cleaning out a water trough the other day and I didn't really have time to do it properly. But I thought, hang on, what would mum say? She'd say, if the job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Just take an extra couple of minutes, get a scrubbing brush, scrub it all out properly, rinse it out, fill it up, job done. And actually, then you can take pride in the work that you have done. 
if you do it properly. Whereas if you do kind of half a job, but do it half, there's just no point. It's a waste of time. You'll have to do it again um, and it will take longer. So actually, if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Mum got me into cooking from a young age. She would get us involved. She would get us helping. She would get us stirring things. And she always batch cooked. So that's where my love of batch cooking came. If you're going to take the time to make a bolognese, make enough bolognese that you can then put in the freezer. And when you're tight on time, you've got a meal that's homemade from scratch and you've just got something delicious that you can pull out. So actually, if you're going to the effort of making something, double it up and put one in the freezer. And that was really, really great advice, particularly when you've got a family and lots of endless meals, endless food that needs to produ be produced, actually just double up a recipe and freeze some. So that was really good. And it was really great as well, her getting us to help her in the kitchen. Initially, it probably slowed her down, but it taught me and my brother how to cook. And then it helped her because she would say, darling, can you go and make this? Could you do this? Could you stir that? And it got me and my brother interested in cooking, learning. We learned so much from her. And, you know, a really, really good thing is to get, uh, get other family members involved in the kitchen helping you. I will link videos in the description of this of household things that mum has taught me over the years. One of them is just invaluable. Hanging out your washing properly. Give it a good shake. Give it a good pull. There, there is no point hanging out a t-shirt that's kind of all bunched up and scrunched up because it's going to take more time to iron it. You know, Simon shirts, I'll make sure that the sleeves are the right way round, that the cuffs are straight. Give it a good shake. Pull it if it needs pulling and I'll put it on a hanger or hang it neatly out and then it saves time. You can just quickly iron it or even not bother if you've hung out your washing carefully. She also taught me, and I used to think that she was bonkers, but she was so right, to fold your laundry before you put it in the washing machine. So when you strip a bed, fold the sheets, put them in the washing machine folded, they still wash really, really well and then hang them out and they're less creased that way. It is such a good hack. I shared the YouTube video a while ago and it's been really well watched and lots of people have said it's such a good tip, Charlie. Also, don't overfill your washing machine because then things won't wash properly. So make sure you don't overload it. Just, you know, hold some things back if you need to do two loads rather than cramming it in for one because if you cram things in, they won't wash as well. Make your bed every single day. I literally I get out of bed and I make it and then it's done and you can go up to your room and you can just think, oh, it's so lovely. It's horrid walking into a bedroom with an unmade bed and you know sheets are everywhere and it's just a mess. You just walk in and you feel deflated. Whereas if you walk in and it's beautiful, it's uplifting and it's really, really important to get your children to make their bed from a young age. Just get them to you know, straighten things out. They're not gonna make it perfectly. You can go and do it, do a better job if you want to, but really important life skill to, um, to make your bed and then you start the day kind of on the right foot. Ours aren't allowed to go <laughs> out anywhere until they've made their bed and they will be late for school because they're sent back up to their rooms to make their bed. It's really, really important to, um, to do, to do that. And lastly, looking after animals. So we were really lucky we had ponies growing up, but mum made us look after them. If we'd been to a competition, if we'd been out riding all day, your pony comes first. You've got to make sure that everything is put away, the car's unpacked, the trailer is washed out before it's put away, and your pony is happy and settled. You might just want to get out of your riding things, get into the bath, have something to eat, get yourself comfortable, but actually all of those things need to be done before you do you. And it was such a good lesson. She was really, really strict with us. We weren't even allowed a blade of straw on the yard. She sent us back out to sweep it properly. But it made me again take pride in things. 
And if the trailer is properly washed out, when you get back, it's ready for the next time. If things are unpacked, you know where everything is. When we get back now, Coco and I, from, from a riding something, I make sure that we clean our riding things so it's ready for the next time. I'm not putting dirty things away into a cupboard because then the next time when you go to get them out, you've forgotten that you haven't cleaned it and you're on the back foot. So that was a really good life lesson of um, you know looking after animals, making sure that they come first before you. You know, obviously you might need a quick, quick pee or something, but they came first and mum was really adamant about that and it's a really good life lesson. I think actually for us growing up, doing the horses, having ponies, taught us so much and you know, really, really good skill to have. I hope that you have enjoyed me sharing um, some of mum's wisdom with you. I'm sure there'll be lots of other things that will spring into my mind, but um, she was a really, really wise old bird. She did have um, her troubles and I've talked about those before and I think, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail now, but one thing that I do often think about is if you are in a loving, happy relationship, you flourish and thrive as a person. If you are in a really unhappy situation, then then you can't flourish, you can't thrive, you can't grow as a person. She was incredible, but she had a very, very tough, un unhappy time at home. And I think she would have been utterly phenomenal if she had been in a really loving, supportive, kind relationship that um, encouraged her to do all the things that she was good at. She was an amazing mother, but she did have her demons. She did have her battles. And I do believe that if you're in a loving, kind, supportive relationship, you can flourish and thrive as a person. And I am so lucky that I have my darling husband who is you know, just so kind, so supportive, so encouraging. And I feel truly blessed that that I have found that in my life and very, very sad that um, that mum didn't. She did in the early days, but uh, but not not latterly. But she was so wise and, and a wonderful mother and taught me so much. So I hope that you have enjoyed me sharing this with you and I am wishing you a really happy weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Remember to hit the like do leave your, your pearls of wisdom in the comments below for everybody else and I will see you again next week. I'm sending you lots of love and thank you for joining me today.